in my head, I think of it kind of as keeping up with the Kardashians. Fly me to the moon. Let me play. I don't even know what's happening. Um, hi, I'm Landry Noel. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. Um, and today we're going to be talking about musicals because that makes my heart happy. And we're just going to do it. That was a little aggressive. I'm sorry. Sorry if you hate musicals. I don't... We miss great comment. Bring it back. Um, that's just what I'm going to film. I'm just going to sit here and play you all... Not all, most of the songs from Great Comet because I just need a minute to show you how good they are. I need to get my message out there. Um, I just thought I'd share. I'm gonna just give anyone who hasn't seen Great Comet a little background to the story. It's basically about this girl who is engaged to marry Andre. And Andre is off at war. Um, based off of the book, um, it's based off of like a 70 page section of the book of um, War and Peace. It's about Natasha. She goes to like marry this guy and so she's staying with her aunt and her cousin or her cousin. I think it's her cousin or something like that. Um, while she's waiting for him and then she meets this guy named Anatole at the ball or not at the ball. Ugh, this isn't Cinderella's story. At um, the opera. She meets him at the opera and then she's like wow he's cute and um, she's like wow she's cute and then after three days she's like I love you I need to marry you but he's already married. Plot twist. Um, is he already? Yeah, he's been married like three times. So, like, and Pierre's like the friend to all here. He's like the long lost friend that you, you always knew you had. And he is married to Anatole's sister, but he doesn't love her. Um, so basically, I'm just gonna give a lot of spoilers now. So if you don't want spoilers, don't listen. Um, and then basically she, she falls for this guy. Um, she basically, she falls for Anatole and then Natasha tries to like kind of kill herself, I think. And then... Andre and then Andre comes back and she's like oh I can't marry him now because I basically called off the engagement because I was in love with this guy named Anatole and then Natasha goes to Pierre and she's like yo I know I messed up and he and Pierre's like yo I love you girl I if I was such a good guy if I wasn't married I would propose to you right now and then there's somehow a comment in all of this and it's just really sad. So the full name is Natasha Pierre in The Great Comet of 1812. I saw it like two summers ago. If any of you know me, I can't stop talking about this musical. It's like my favorite. I saw it on the night of Oak, Okirete Onaudawan. I think, oh, I'm sorry if I messed that up. Okay, the great comet of eighteen twelve. Josh Groban just makes me so happy. Like, and he also makes me want to cry at the same time. I don't understand. The comet said to portend untold horrors and the end of the world. Um. So yeah. This is the last song and it makes me want to cry. No fear, I love Josh Groban. No I gaze joyfully And this bright star Having traced its parabola That part gets me every time, okay, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> through immeasurable space Seems suddenly to have stopped That part. I hate that part. I hate that part. I'm like, stop yelling at me, okay? Oh, it's in Pierre and Natasha. I was in the wrong song. <sighs> okay, let me find the saddest part in Pierre and, and she Natasha. Went to the middle of the ballroom to sing her. Oh, I can't do this to myself. Didn't speak. It's over. I know that it never can be. Well. But still, I'm tormented by the wrongs I've done him. Tell him that I beg him to forgive. If I were not this is so myself, but the brightest, handsomest, best man on earth. And if I were free, I would get down on my knees this minute 
and ask you for your hand. And for your love. I'm so dramatic. Also, Danae Benton is such a queen. I saw it with Danae Benton. And it was, it was beautiful. And like Lucas Steele. And uh, I didn't see it with... I saw it with Ingrid Mikaelson. And she's the one who sings... Don't you worry there, my honey, we may not have any money. I don't even know how the song goes, but like, I don't even know what it's called, but I know how it goes. Um, I'm trying to think of that song now. Um, but anyway, she, Ingrid McHaleson was in it as Sonia when I saw it, and like, oh my gosh, my heart. Instead of, but I love Britton Ashford, Ashford or something. Yeah, Britton Ashford. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot her name. She has an amazing, like, unique voice. Oh, also, like, okay, so I was sitting in the balcony, and so, like, during the show, they throw out, like, egg shakers, and they throw out egg rolls or dumplings or whatever, that, something like that, and, like, little to-go boxes. So cute. I didn't get any, but it's fine. Um, and, like, they do so many scenes where it's, like, they're on stage, but they built it so it's in the round, and the lighting was amazing. I will insert a picture here of how amazing the lighting was, and everything about this show is just so beautiful, like, the lighting, the setting, and they didn't win any Tonys, and it... This is such a good song. I'm gonna start it from like a good spot. Pretending and preposterous. The sky. Oh. Okay, so I'm, how, how is, I don't even know what to say. Like, I'm still blown away. But Dave Malloy is a genius. Dave Malloy. He wrote such music where it's like. It makes you think. It makes you think lyrically. It makes you think on the way he composed it. And like the way the orchestra makes such weird, like. I feel like I read somewhere that he like, he used to write video game music or something. I don't know. Maybe that's someone else. But. Like, he, like, his songs are so, like, the chords he plays are so confusing, and you're like, wait, that doesn't, that's, that doesn't sound, that sounds interesting, you know? Oh my gosh, the show is so good. Okay, okay. Um, like, everyone in this cast was so talented, and they did it once before back in, like, I don't know, was it 2015 or something? This, sh this came out in 2017. I think the other one was 2015, if I can, but anyway, but that had Pippa Sue in it. Philippa, Philippa Sue, I call her Pippa Sue, I don't, Philippa Sue, and she, I mean, she's amazing, she was, um, Natasha, I mean, I love Danae Benton, like, oh my gosh, Danae Benton, I think, I don't know, but like, honestly, Philippa Sue was in it, and I never got to see her in it, and I feel like she would be really good, oh my gosh, I forgot to tell you, okay, all my theater, like, nerds are, like, freaking out right now, but, like, everyone else is like, what are you talking about, um, so I saw, um, I didn't see her, but like there was rumor that since it was Oaks opening night that when I went, that Philippa Sue was there and I was like freaking out. If you're gonna listen to any songs first, I recommend the prologue. That's a song that really got me into the musical. Songs that I really love, um, No One Else is a classic to start with. Like start with No One Else, like you will hear how amazing Danae Benton is. Um, I love the names of his songs in this because he literally just names them as the interactions between people. So he'll be like Natasha and Anatole, Natasha and Pierre. Um, Sonia and Natasha. So basically it's like many like scenes I think of it as like you know like little like scenes back and forth because they're basically just talking but they're singing it so kind of like they do in Hamilton where they sing the whole show this this whole show is sung and it's like so yeah um I'm gonna play one last song for all of us um until one day I see by the sad look on her face there's a dreadful I'm gonna skip to the chorus. Who do I ask for help? Is it all on me? Is it all on me? Oh, I will stand in the dark for you. I think at 
at first it's really confusing. So if you're confused, me too. Um, but I love musicals where it's like the more you listen to, the more you unwrap about each character and the background and the setting and like what they've gone through and what they're going through and what... There's things in the story that also can like be foreshadowed. I sound like an English teacher talking- Because basically there's like all this family drama and they're like, mm. but it's not really family drama. They're just like all like kind of like long lost friends. So I don't know. I think of it as kind of like a drama TV show and I'm like, ooh, what's the, what's the hot tea, sis, you know? But I don't know. I love it. And it just makes me happy. So listen to like literally everything. Listen to the whole soundtrack from- I, sound, I say soundtrack instead of soundtrack. Not important, but I do. Um, listen from beginning to end and you will like cry. You will feel moved. You will feel touched. I'm sure there's a bootleg online if you want to watch. I don't recommend. I'm so sad it closed. And this is just like my memorial service for it closing a year later. <laughs> show is so good it just really did not deserve to close but who knows maybe one day it'll be back right and that's gonna be okay um if you guys enjoyed today's video of me ranting about great comet for 27 hours give this video a thumbs up comment down below if you want more musical theater videos and yeah if you if you like these kind of videos let me know your thoughts on what i played for you on your thoughts on Great Comet and what your favorite musical is or maybe a musical I should review or one I should see or anything. I'll see you guys next week. Bye friends!